Hi, boys and girls. I'm glad you're back with us. Even though you can't be in the church building, I'm glad you're, you're spending time with us, learning the same things that we are, and hopefully you can come back really soon. We're learning about peace this month. Last week on Easter, we learned about how God made peace with us. And this week, we're gonna learn about how we can make peace with other people. But before we get into that, let's practice our Bible verse, Romans 14, 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. We can only live in peace with other people because God has made peace with us. Let's worship him and thank him for that together. I gotta be honest, it's easy to think about peace as a bubble. Ignoring the world so that you can chill out and get a little you time. Or, or maybe you think of peace as a simple agreement. You do your thing, I do mine. Then we don't have to worry about each other's problems or the ways we're different from each other. Or you might see peace as a big, grand thing. General, this treaty officially ends all wars. But true peace doesn't look like any of that. True peace is messy. It takes hard work and creativity. It says, how can I listen to you first before I speak? It says, how can I learn what it's like to walk in your shoes before I try to fix it? How can we get creative to find a way through? See, when you do the hard work of making peace, others can see God at work in you. That's why making peace is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship, it's about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
Hi, it's your boy Jacob, and today we're talking about peace. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. So if you had an argument with someone and you feel like that relationship is broken, peace can help you rebuild that relationship. It's like building a, a bridge. Bridge, 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 bridge. You can build a bridge out of anything. Legos, popsicle sticks, spaghetti, and even trash. Sometimes we throw things away without thinking about how much we really need them. So I'm going to recycle this big, beautiful bin of garbage by building a bridge. Let's do this. It's alive. Now we just need some glue. Um, glue, glue, oh, glue stick. That should work, right? Everything you build needs the right kind of glue to hold it all together. Without the right kind of glue, everything can kind of fall apart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Recycle Bridge. You see, it's hard to make things stick together when you don't have the right kind of glue. As you'll discover in today's story, helping people stick together takes the right kind of glue too. So, stick around. <laughs> you see what I did there? Stick. <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Colossians, chapter three, Verse 15. In a letter written to the Colossian church, the Apostle Paul wrote, Let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. Now let's see what that truth may look like played out in our lives today. Katie wiped the sweat from her forehead and took a long drink from her water bottle. How is it this hot in April? She looked back at the long patch of scrubby ground on the corner lot by Miss Watson's house. Her friends, Caleb and Nona, were both pulling weeds too. I thought we'd be done before lunch. I'll take us days to clear out all this brush. All three kids lived in the same neighborhood and were in Mr. Benson's seventh grade social studies class. It had been Katie's bright idea to start a neighborhood garden for their community service project. Well, we have to finish, unless you want to fail social studies. Even though the friends had been working for a couple of hours already, they'd only cleared the brambles from a small patch of land at the corner. Even when we finish pulling weeds, we still have to dig up the dirt. Yeah, and plant the seeds and water them and stuff. Look, we just need to get it done. I really want an A, okay? Let's use what we've cleared so far and pick one thing to plant. Sunflowers. What? They're big, they're bold. They'll brighten up the whole neighborhood. I don't want to plant flowers. Katie did a quick search on her phone for backup. Plus, you aren't supposed to plant sunflowers until summer. That's a big fat fail for class. Well, it feels like summer. We should plant a pumpkin patch. I mean, how awesome will it be to have all the little kids come right here to get their pumpkins in the fall? That's like half a year away. You guys. Plus two words, pumpkin pie. Uh, two more words is disgusting. Katie jumped right between her sparring friends. You guys, we need something easy that will actually grow now before the end of the school year. I looked it up. She held up her phone and showed them a picture of small flowers with viney green stalks. What are those even? You have got to be kidding me. Katie checked her screen again. Petunias, we can plant them right here by the stop sign. They grow super fast, we'll get a good pick for class, and then we're done. I thought the whole point of this was to help people. Petunias are nice. 
this is ridiculous. Something that small will just get overrun by all the weeds we haven't pulled. You got a better idea? Yeah, sunflowers. You know, something big and beautiful. Or pumpkins! Katie ripped off her gardening gloves and hurled them into the dirt. Fine, do your own community service project. You're quitting the garden? It's not a garden, it's a weedy dirt patch. I'll do my own project. Katie grabbed her water bottle and her tools and stalked off. I cannot believe them. At home, Katie kicked off her muddy shoes and hurled her dirty gloves on the floor. How'd it go, sweetie? Awful. We hardly cleared any weeds, and Nona and Caleb wouldn't listen to my idea about what to plant. It is a pretty big project. I'm doing my own. Isn't it a group thing? Nona and Caleb don't even care about the grade. They want to do all this stuff with pumpkins and sunflowers and stuff we'll never even finish. I get it. It's a lot easier to keep it small. But it's up to you whether you want to hold on to being angry or go make this right with your friends. They started it. Look, God designed you to be at peace on the inside. Peace with Him and with others. Okay, okay, yeah, I just, I don't know where to start. You could start with more help. I bet Miss Watson would be willing to lend a hand since that weedy patch is right by her yard. Maybe. Oh, and Mrs. Garcia is always trying to start a garden in their backyard, but she says it's too shady. Maybe she'd like to help. Katie nodded slowly. After lunch, she took a trip around the neighborhood and spotted Caleb shooting some hoops in his driveway. Then she dragged him across the street to knock on Nona's door. You realize I don't want to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Just give me a minute, both of you, please. Caleb and Nona stared at Katie, arms crossed. I'm really sorry. I got so stuck on making an A that I didn't listen to your ideas. I was just so hot and frustrated. Katie's friends waited. I talked to Mrs. Watson and the Garcias and that family with the little kids by the stop sign. They all want a garden, like a big vegetable garden. They want to help us. Really? We get cleared the lot pretty fast with that much help. And we can plant everything, tomatoes and beans and carrots and sunflowers and pumpkins and whatever people want to eat. We'll have to help keep it up over the summer though. All the way to pumpkin season. Exactly. Okay, I'm in. Caleb gave Katie a high five. Then they both turned to Nona. She hesitated. Okay, sure, but you're not gonna get me to eat pumpkin pie, because sweet potato is way better. Deal. The Garcias can help out tomorrow afternoon, so we can get back to it then. Katie headed home, relieved that she was on good terms with her friends again and at peace on the inside. She was living out the truth of Paul's words. Let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. Some days, people are hard to get along with. Your sister spills milk on your homework. Your mom packs your lunch with that weird kind of bread you keep telling her you don't like. You have an argument with your friend over your group project. You just want to yell at everybody. But the Apostle Paul reminds us in his letter to the Colossians, let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts as parts of one body you were appointed to live in peace. Do you hear that? It's your job to make peace with the people around you. It's one of the things that you were made for, but you don't have to do it alone. You can have the peace that Christ gives. That kind of peace is strong and powerful. It's the glue that holds relationships together. So, if your sister spills milk on your homework, be quick to forgive. If you're in an argument with a friend, be patient and listen. And if you feel like yelling at everyone, <sighs> count to 10 or yell into a pillow. Or better yet, ask God to give you peace. Don't throw away a relationship without thinking. Peace is more important than being right. Here's the one thing to remember today. We can make peace with others. Think about who you need to make peace with today. Ask someone you trust for ideas on how to take the first step. You'll probably need a little creativity and you'll definitely need the right kind of glue. Super glue. <laughs> this ought to do the trick. <laughs> when you see me next, I'll have a bridge that will truly last. Well, I'll see you next time. <laughs>